Hello and welcome to the Strategic Bookkeeper podcast. In today's episode, I'm interviewing Claire Beckett. She is one of the bookkeepers who's in my transformation program. And recently I was speaking to Claire, we were messaging because I was seeking to understand where everyone was at in the program. Like I have this thing called No Soldier Left Behind. And I just wanted to see, you know, how's everyone going? And Claire let me know that early on in the program, she identified through what I was talking about, which is primarily promises kept systems and team, that the back end of the practice, she really needed to press pause on the practice, close her books and fix up the back end so that she was keeping her promises. What she shared with me was amazing. And I just thought bookkeepers need to hear her story. They need to hear what she did because it's so important. And I know it's going to be meaningful and help bookkeepers who are having problems, some of the problems they know, some of the problems they don't kind of realize and help them with what they need to do about it. So really excited to share this with the entire bookkeeping community as well as my tribe. So let's jump in. I'm Jeannie Savage, the strategic bookkeeper. I've been in practice for 14 years, but more importantly, five years in, I achieved a lifestyle practice. This means I scaled my business, could take my hands off the wheel and draw a nice six figure income while being time rich. And that's what I call my dream on my terms. I was recently awarded Women in Finance Innovator of the Year, recognizing my book, my podcast, my program, and my impact globally. The Strategic Bookkeeper is my life's work and the opportunity to help bookkeepers globally achieve the income and lifestyle that sets them free absolutely fills my cup. Please do connect with me on socials at the Strategic Bookkeepers Way private Facebook group or shoot me an email, hello at the strategicbookkeeper.global. Welcome to the podcast, Claire. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, we all know I roll a bit casual. All right. So I'm really grateful that you came on today to share. And further to what I let everyone know in the intro, what we're going to start with is getting Claire to tell us a bit about herself, a bit about her practice, so you know where she's at in her journey. Sure. So my name's Claire, and I'm the owner of Sunside Accounting. It's been nearly two years now. So we're still relatively young, small team. We have myself who works three days a week. I've got two young kids, so full-time is not an option for me. And then I have a full-time worker in the Philippines, Chris. She's amazing. And then I also have a business partner per se who has their own practice and we basically collaborate together. If we get a larger client and I don't have the capacity or the specific skill set, I will uh, subcontract and get his assistance to help me out with those larger clients. So that's the basis of my team and size. And yeah, joined the program, I think, nearly a year ago now. Yeah, it's the 4th of April while we're recording this. So amazing. And yes, I know your business partner, he, he is an awesome human. So that's really cool because things don't always go to plan with business partners. So, okay, so amazing. So you're one full-time Philippines-based staff member and you are working three days yourself. Yep, perfect. Two years in, that's really interesting because that's, as I talk about in my book, that's the curve. So now what I'd love to know, is a bit about uh so when we chatted recently you told me that you kind of when I was rattling on about promises kept you realized because I talk about front end back end of the business win the work do the work and you realized you know what there's some cracks in the foundation we're at risk of breaking promises even if our clients don't know a complaint right it's like hang on a sec it's not up to them to complain and it's not up to them to really care it's up to us to do what we said we'd do in the time frame we said we'd do it and our promise is our service level agreement, which is why I love Ignition. Do you use Ignition? Yeah, it was the first the first piece of software that I got. I did, I've used it from the get-go. It's amazing. So with Ignition, I was chatting to one of our newer tribe members recently, and she's like brand new in practice, hardly any clients. And she said, you know, well, Jeannie, all the software, what do I do? And I mean, the first thing you need to do is win clients and manage your practice. Then Ignition is like the gateway, right? What and for payment collection. Are you using? Um, and practice management, because it used integrating mm, it with Zero Practice Manager. Not yet, because I haven't had enough of a pain point to go, okay, I'm going to choose time spent here to automatically send stuff to XPM. 
it hasn't just been that much of a pain point yet for me to integrate. We're still manually using templates and ignition and whatnot, but nothing actually pushes through to XPM yet. Not even the service level agreement? Mm, no, I don't have any integration between um, ignition and XPM at the moment. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm not sure how ours is working because we use the three packages. Do you use the three packages and video yeah, sales? Yeah, or is, you've got that addition. At the moment, it's about two. Yeah, I am giving options. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because we've got the addition where you can send. And the I call it a video sales letter. Ignition just call it video. Oh, I then... do. Sorry, I have that. Yeah, it's like the bookkeeping one. So when I came on board with Ignition, they were just trialing a bookkeeping package. Yeah, and I can insert a video sales letter into that. Oh, I did not know that. So that is awesome yeah. um, because you know that I am all about the video sales that I <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I do mine bespoke for every client still. That's Good. just a decision I've made. Yeah, I like to yeah. mention something that we spoke about on the phone call. So I just do them bespoke. It's five minutes. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, I did that for like at least two years before I recorded a static. And then other bookkeepers are running with the static immediately because obviously I give them everything they need to do that. But it's not like you're sending a proposal out every day. You know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I completely agree. So that's really exciting. Okay. So with Ignition, it's the place where you're going to do your promise. You put your promise in there, right? I just love for bookkeepers. I know they'll go, oh my goodness, I never thought of it that way, right? My promise, my my client engagement, my service level agreement, my contract. It's actually a promise. You just shook someone's hand and you looked them in the eye and you said every little line on this service level agreement is going to be delivered to you. When I said I'd do it. And the minute you break any of that, I believe that it should be a big siren goes off and you should do exactly what you did. So tell us about when you discovered that maybe the back end had some cracks in it? Yeah, well, it was interesting because I started the program and you said it's choose your own adventure. Think about which, you know, area is most important for you right now. And I started to do the front end stuff out of interest. And then I realized very quickly that I wasn't actually having any challenges in that regard. Like it was last year, the work just kept coming through very consistently without me needing to push for it in any way. So the networking things, um, I sort of put like down as a low priority. And then I started having a look at the systems and team modules. And I realized that we really lacked so many standard operating procedures and we were inefficient. There were so many things that I saw that you have in there to use that we weren't utilizing. And I was quickly becoming strapped for time. I was the roadblock in the team because I only work three days a week. And there were so many things that I didn't have implemented that just basically made me the roadblock. So that was the first thing that happened where I was like, I actually need to focus on the back end first. And so I started diving into that. And I think it was in combination of seeing what was in there that you had to use and implement. Plus... Quick podcast interruption. The doors to the Strategic Bookkeeper Transformation Program are now closed, but you can join the waitlist at the strategicbookkeeper.global forward slash waitlist. When you join the waitlist, you'll get all the information about the program and when the doors are opening next. Now, in the meantime, here's how you can work with me. You can use my book, you can use this podcast, or you can join our starter membership, which you're going to find at the strategicbookkeeper.global forward slash starter. Now the starter membership is an amazing place to start. It is 59 US dollars for 12 months access and that is a one-time payment, okay? Inside the starter membership, you are going to get access to an entire vault full of tools and resources that you can use alongside my book to thrive in practice plus a monthly mastermind with me. Back to the podcast. Just general comments that you were making um, in like the weekly webinars that you had with us around make sure you're keeping your promises. Like if you're not doing things in the time frame that you said you're doing them, it's not okay. And no one had ever really put it to me in that way. I guess in startup, like the general gist you hear from everyone is just like, just keep saying yes, keep saying yes, like get the work. Don't turn down opportunities because you're trying to grow. And especially when you're starting out and you're not even paying yourself necessarily a wage yet, all you're thinking about is winning the work. And it got to a point where I could just see that we weren't getting bank recs done in the time frame that we'd set internally. Any compliance stuff we were still getting done, but we weren't getting performance reports out to clients in like 
a quick turnaround. And I started to have a couple of emails from clients just saying, hey, just wondering when you're going to send this. And that was a big alarm bell for me because I'm like, if they're asking for it, that's not okay. So um, yeah, I just realized that what we were doing wasn't working. So I dived fully into systems and team. And I really didn't move much in the program for a while because I just focused on what we needed to do next, which was, you know, take the templates that were in the systems and team, implement efficiency so that I'm not the roadblock. But also I realized that part of that was implementing XPM for us. And I already knew that you Mm. used XPM because that had been mentioned several times. And I'd heard it through others as well at ZeroCon last year. So I thought, okay, I just need to put a pause on everything and implement XPM. And everyone told me it is a big beast. So I spent Mm -hmm. um, two months when I could, because we were so busy, I just had to allocate time towards this, like allocating time to the program. And yeah, it was it was a big job, but we implemented that because for context, previously, we were sort of managing our workload through Google Calendar, and also Mm -hmm. Trello. So I was using a combination of the two to sort of keep tabs on what we've done and what we still need to do every month and it just wasn't working we had totally outgrown Mm. it so um, yeah implemented XPM and now on the back side of that we're so much more ready for scaling than we were before and the efficiencies that we've created you know we're in a much better position to to take on more whereas before we were full but we were inefficient full at capacity. And that's scary, right? Like I've been exactly where you are. And even when we had good systems, it was, I guess, a bit like you're saying, we needed to, there were improvements that need to be made, et cetera. And it would keep me up at night. And I remember stopping and saying to my team, listen, I want to scale this business and I refuse to continue scaling it while everyone is not just on exactly the same page and there are no excuses because otherwise the inefficiency, you can scale the revenue, the profit will not scale, right? Exactly. And I could see that things were growing, things were going good, but I could just see that that would have a turning point and go the other way if we kept just saying yes, and then things would fall through the cracks more and more, and then we'd have uncappy clients. So yeah, that was the best thing that we've done. And now I'm actually in a position to look at something that the team also looks at. I can actually put the manager hat on better and see, okay, what's behind, what's upcoming, what's urgent. And it's just so much better. And yeah, I do have greater peace of mind now using something like XPM in the practice. And I want to come back to asking a few things about software, but you just said something there that made me want to ask something. So in terms of putting the manager hat on and going back a set to promises kept, I punch everyone in the face with that, right? And I don't hold back. I'm like, don't tell me your client just said, oh, it's okay that the bus was, you know, lodged on this date, or it's okay that I didn't get the financial reports. Like they're lying to you. It's Mm. not okay. They're looking elsewhere. You'll lose them. They're telling their friends you're letting them down. And so I think I'm so crystal clear on that. Now, in terms of that manager hat, was it helpful when I explained, I mean, I absolutely explained it in the book and then we rinse and repeat in the program, right? It's quite simple in terms of, and I was just telling a friend recently about how I am in business now, not how I've always been, but there's no people pleasing for me. I turn up and I plan, organize, staff, direct and control. You don't make friends when you're doing it, but you won't be able to build and maintain a profitable, thriving, fun practice without doing it. Did you get something from that or do you think you were already a good manager? I don't think I was the best manager. I think I was okay, but I wasn't using the right tools and like I was sort of overseeing my work, but I wasn't properly overseeing the team's work. And that's where the gap was, is that we weren't looking at same, same. Mm, Yeah, the oversight. I found the same and it started to just make me feel sick years ago. (laughs) Just this fear that I'm not across everything. So you bought in XPM and look for everyone listening, that's zero practice manager. So if you're in the States and you use QBO or anything, what we're talking about here is a robust industry specific job management tool because Trello and a Sana, while I see people use them and I think there's value, I think that's a beat up Mazda. And I think a good practice management software like Zero Practice Manager, the QuickBooks one, all these other ones, they are a Ferrari. And so, you know, if you want to scale, you need that. So beyond Zero Practice Manager, do your clients all use Dex Prepare? No, I'm still using HubDoc. 
And do you think about moving over or are you pretty kind of happy in that space right now? I'm okay with it right now. I yeah. Think what we use, it is, look, change is hard too, right? Well, see, for me, when Zero came out and said, because Receipt Bank, now Dex Prepare, their fees are massively increased. And it was not long after HubDoc said, oh, if you're on Zero, it's free, right? And I would have saved a fortune. And I said to my team, well, can we change to HubDoc? And they said, no. You can't because Dex Prepare, it is a bit of a Rolls Royce. But I also think sometimes when you're in a tech and you're using it, the change management's massive. So Mm. sometimes you just keep proceeding with what you're using. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not to say I won't down the line, but I've sort of um, prioritized the installation of different tech and it's there in the back of my mind. But yeah, there's been other techs that I felt has been more vital for us at this stage to implement first and XPM being one of them. But yeah, even just from the standard operating procedures, that whole module, there were so many things that I picked up in there that I was able to go, okay, there's no reason why I should be doing this. This is something that I can pass on to my team member. And then I started doing things like creating email templates that, you know, Chris in the Philippines could send for me and know that that's her job when a client comes on board. So there were so many efficiencies that I was able to create from that module, just going, oh, okay, this is how someone else does it. It works. Why aren't I doing it? Because it's saving me five minutes every time me sending the email versus someone else sending it. And even just the communication email I found awesome where a new client comes on board and you send out a welcome email. That's something we weren't doing. And I found that really good because we ended up creating something in Canva where it basically, you know, is a nice, pretty hello um, and introduces the team because it's an opportunity for me to say, hey, it's not just me in the team if I failed to Mm. mention it on the call. So they're not going to be surprised if they get an email if it's a day I'm not working and my team member Chris is helping me with following up receipts or whatnot. So that welcome email as well has just been so good to implement um, as a little like that step, like after you, um, I think you mentioned that, you know, when they sign the proposal, they don't know what's going to happen next. So it was like that welcome email was about, hey, we're here. We saw that you signed. We're just saying hello And, you know, you're with us now. And that's just been enough. And I even mention our communication preferences in that email. I say, here's the team. Here's a picture of us. We're real people. And then down the bottom, I've got that we aim to reply in two business days. If something's urgent, give us a call. Yes, I love this. Communication is a secret marketing weapon. Do you know, I actually think that onboarding process, that welcome email stuff is worth five grand alone. Mm. You know, like, isn't it just that one thing? Because I know for me, that's what, because I always listen to clients and it was when a client kind of, you know, maybe I think only one had to say it for me to realize everyone felt the same. It was like once I press go, because it can be two weeks before you get started, right? So Mm. once you press go, we know what we're going to do, but the client's out there in the never, never. And that's where the buyer's remorse fork in the road hits the customer journey. And the minute we, you know, reach out, hey, we're excited. This is all going to happen. Here's how you reach me by email, by phone. Here's exactly what to expect next. Here's who you're going to hear from next. The buyer's remorse is completely gone And they can just take a breath, relax. They know how to call you, but they also know that you're getting in touch. So I just love hearing this. And how simple is it? It's like, oh my goodness, it's an email template. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And sometimes that's what you need. You just need to see how are other people doing it? Because some things I saw and I was like, okay, great. I got comfort in knowing that we are doing that. And then there were other things that I was like, okay, we're not doing that. I see the value in that. Let's implement it. And a lot of the stuff in there was just really quick wins, like the communication email. That's just a template sitting in my Gmail, ready to go out. As soon as a new customer comes on board, I was able to do that in a day. So there's, there were just so mm. many quick wins in that module. Yeah, it's been so helpful. Okay. So then you implemented Zero Practice Manager and that makes sense because once you win the work, the work's got to be handled. I assume you're still using your Google Calendar in combination? Yeah. For like reminding yeah. that payrolls today for a specific client, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And a visual overview of your capacity, right? Because if there's no blank spaces, <laughs> there's no capacity to do the work. Okay, yeah. great. So the job starts, you've got Zero Practice Manager. Any other tech you want to tell us about that you implemented or just other things that you did in this time? Because it's been a while you've been focusing on this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do actually, because... um 
And I was going to put this in the Facebook group, but this is a far better way to explain it. So I can't really remember how I stumbled upon it, but um, I have also implemented Content Snare. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, Jeannie. I think it's relatively new. They must have been at one of the zero events for someone to mention it. And I ended up starting to get marketing emails from them and I jumped on a webinar. And it's been a game changer for me as well, because for me, I've always known that I'm the roadblock. So I'm constantly trying to find efficiencies. How can I remove myself from the situation so that things can keep going if I'm not at work or my kids are sick? So Content Snare is basically an information collection Mm -hmm. software. It's cloud-based and you can use it for a lot of different things. So what we use it for is um, bank reconciliation queries. That's the month on month. We're using that constantly, Mm -hmm. but also using it for um, client to BAS agent linking instructions for clients. And yeah, also for just general instructions on how to do things. So for example, I had a client come on board and usually we would email them and say, hey, we need to do the client to agent linking steps. And it's just this email with all these steps that they have to complete. And it's overwhelming. Whereas now we send it off in content snare and they only see one thing that they have to do at a time. So they're more likely to do it because they're only presented with one step. And then once they're done that step, they go on to the next one. So it will say things like step one, do you have a MyGov ID? Like every single step and uh, Content Snare had these templates already available. I didn't have to make them. And I used it for the first time with a new client and they did it in like a day. And I'd never had anyone do client to BAS agent linking that quickly because they would look at the email, go, it's in the too hard basket. And they would yeah. wait for me to call them and say, hey, how are you going with that? Can we get onto that? Because we need access, blah, blah, blah. Whereas Content Snare will remind them So the amount of emails that I have saved in reminding a client, just a friendly email reminder, you haven't done the client to agent linking, Content Snare does that and you can tell it when you want those reminders to send out. You get an email from Content Snare when it's overdue and that prompts me to have a call. So I'm still, you know, making sure that I talk to the client and not just playing email tennis. But, you know, that process alone, like client to agent linking, I could easily spend half an hour back and forward just trying to get a client to do that over the course of yeah. a week or so. Whereas that content snare, I reckon it took me five minutes and then content snare did the rest. It's been amazing. Wow. It's not that expensive. I think the one I'm on is about $50 a month. And Shut the front gate. That was yeah. going to be my next question. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Um, you honestly would love it. And you can insert Loom videos. So at the very start, you can say, hey, this is a new software. This is how you complete it. If you have for any questions, just call me. So good. And the other thing we use it for is like bank rec queries. Like I know you're a big one on just pick up the phone and call them. We have clients who notoriously don't provide receipts. So we use Content Snare to basically send them a request from Content Snare once a month and say, hey, these are all the transactions that we didn't receive a receipt for. This is where we uh, think that they should be coded. Please let us... Yeah, please let us know if any of this is incorrect and we're just flagging to you that we don't have a receipt for it. We've covered ourselves in checking that where we're coding mm. it, it's okay. And previously we were sending an email with the uncoded statement oh. lines report from zero or giving them a call. Like if it was under 10 queries, I would just call them and go, hey, have you got 10 minutes to just smash these out? Whereas now with Content Snare, We send it out, they get a link, and if they open it and then they close their browser and they filled in a couple of the questions, it's saving all the time. So they can close that and click on that link and they will be back to where they were. They don't have to go next, next, next. They're exactly where they left off and they can access it on mobile. So I've actually sent bank rec queries to clients who I know are out and about Mm. and they all the feedback has been good. They've said, oh, I can, do you know what? I was waiting in line for my coffee and I just opened up your request <gasps> and just answered them on my phone, the banquet queries that you were after. Talk about, like, you know how I say relationship convenience and price, relationship convenience. Do you know, I will pay yep. so much more for a service that's where somebody gives me convenience because yep. convenience saves me time. Mm. And I just, money's not my focus, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is just, yeah, I'm going to be on Truly an investment. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, like XPM, that's a big beast. You have to be prepared for that and implement it. Whereas Content Snare, like I was able to implement it in the two-week free trial period. So I think they have two weeks free. And they've got all these videos showing you how to implement all these templates that you can use. Um, I created a company for a client the other day. 
And there was a template there that I just tweaked slightly and I sent it out to the client just saying, hey, this is the information we need from you to form your company. And I can't tell you how much easier that was than sending them an email with all of this information that I needed about their shareholders, their directors, everything. It was already there in Content Snare. And if they filled out 80% of it and had 20% to go, Content Snare would remind them and say, hey, you've just got a few more queries to go. Or I would look at it and go, do you know what? They've done most of it. I'll just pick up a call and we'll get the last 20% done over a phone call. Yeah, which is such a, a great way to do it, right? Okay, amazing. And then beyond Content Snare, anything else implemented yet? I've been using Loom for ages, the paid version, because the amount of times I send clients instructional Maybe videos, true. you can get it for free if you're doing videos under five minutes. So I think Loom is an absolute no-brainer and you can just use the free yeah. version. I found it cheap enough that I just use the paid one. I use Loom all the time. And I think that's pretty much it. We used Ignition from the get-go. I still do use Trello, but that's sort of to manage my day-to-day -day goals. Like I'll pick three things that are my non-negotiables to get done that day and I'll have a list yeah, in Trello. Yeah, we use Asana like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's my brain dump, Trello. Oh, what and about you using G Suite or Microsoft? G Suite all the way. Oh, me too. I know, right? I'm just like, seriously, it's yeah. <laughs> on the bookkeeping side, my team don't need to use Asana because we use the Google chat functionality, but we use it for tasks as well, like the rooms uh, and everything. It's yep. pretty, oh, it's pretty amazing. I haven't tried the Google tasks yet. Yeah, you should get Joe to do a little like walk through ours because it's, I remember when I saw Joe. That would be awesome, it, actually. <gasps> I tell yeah. you, it's like you think you're going to the next level and then it is the next level where you have these spaces and rooms. You can turn one. So I'll chat my assistant and at the click of a button, she turns it into a task that can mm. be moved, prioritised. So the rooms and everything. So Joe's the absolute ninja in that because I love G Suite as well. So you haven't done precision, Dex Precision? No. Oh, the heavens have opened. So that's a good one on the radar. All right. And so what do you think the impact of really deciding to stop, focus on promising kept and get that back end working so much better has been? Honestly, the biggest thing has just been peace of mind because I know that I can start my day by going to XPM and checking if there's any overdue jobs. I couldn't do that before. So I can go to bed at night knowing, nope, I checked XPM, we're on track, I can see what's upcoming and I've done my management piece for the day where I've reminded Chris, hey, this is due at the end of the week, just making sure that's on your radar too and we're going to have that delivered in time. Like I just feel in control again. Yeah, and then also your ability to scale more profitably. Yeah, so what yeah. you'll find with Dex Precision as you grow, when you've got one staff, it's not as much. But as you bring on more staff and it's kind of like, okay, visibility across the files and the actual, like, you know how I have an end of month checklist and stuff like that. The best way I can describe it, and Joe explains this way better, but with Dex Precision, because I think there'll come a point where you implement that. So number one, your workflows go in. So, you know, all the things you need to do throughout the month to get to the end of the month goes in. And you can actually see where your staff member is up to at each point. We actually ended up letting a staff member go that was kind of telling porky pies because Precision made it so visual. And then the other thing is you get optics over the file health. So you can literally at a glance across mm. like 50 or more files, identify if anyone's dropping the ball. The next thing is because of the way it integrates with everything, you reduce keystroke. Yeah. <laughs> Set my soul on fire. Okay, First I'm going to look at this. And it is good because with precision, if you're in our tribe, they'll put the workflows in for you. And it's probably just as you scale, it saves us so much more than we spend. So it's $10 a file. So what happened is it reduced the keystroke so much that when staff left, we didn't have to replace them. I was like, whoa. Okay. So this is probably like, my next thing, I think. <laughs> I think precision is because I'm a little surprised you haven't, but then you've got one staff member and zero practice manager absolutely comes before that. Okay, that's awesome. So I feel like to reiterate, it's the same thing has happened to me. It was I went to bed at night and I slept without, you know, that moment where you go, <laughs> you wake up. 
<laughs> You're just about yeah. to fall asleep and you go. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't live like this. Oh, yeah. did you implement client how-to videos? You know how we have the client-specific task instructions document and then I actually get my team for every single client. It's like a business continuity plan so I can sleep at night. A lot of payroll, a lot of, yeah, so it was like, right, everyone yep. stop. I want a set of how-to videos because yep. 80% of what we do for every client, I think you'd agree, is kind of the same. But the yep. 20% nuance, if you had to get up one morning and just on top of everything else you do and being a mum and little kids running around and it's probably school holidays and you probably got the flu because it's Murphy's Law and then suddenly you have to do six payrolls that you've never touched before, those client how-to videos explaining the nuances are phenomenal. So you brought them in? Yeah, oh, we definitely do that. Sometimes I'll do it still as a written thing if it's super basic and there's just one thing yeah. that's different for a client. But yeah, we have Loom videos for our client. We have like client process docs and that's basically the main reason why I started paying for Loom is because I had some instructional videos for our team that went over five minutes and I was like, no, nah, this is a must to have. If we have a new team member come on board or someone's sick, you can watch this video for myself, refresh if I haven't done that file since I onboarded the client, then I won't stuff it up, and get it, get it right the first time. Yeah, absolutely. And for anyone who's listening who hasn't yet adopted global workforce, we live in a global economy now. And if you don't like it, well, it is where we live. So if you're recruiting in the Philippines or anywhere else, like I'm currently recruiting in South Africa, I have staff wherever they in the world, whoever's great for the job, we communicate via Loom instructions. Even my big boss, Pedra, who's a Kiwi living in Bali, her and I are both visual people, so we actually communicate with each other almost exclusively via Loom video. So one of the big mistakes they make when they bring on, say, a team member in the Philippines is doing the whole instructions in writing, et cetera, when the videos are on the whole more meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. And a hundred percent agree with that. And be, like, because I sometimes work at random hours of the day, like I'll, I'm a morning person and I will wake up at 4.30 some mornings. And mm. if I feel like I'm behind on my work, I will be working at that time. And if I come across something that I can see that I can show Chris how to do, I will create a Loom video at 5am in the morning and have be screen sharing and she can see exactly what I need. And then I'll send her that Loom. And if I'm not working that day, I have such great peace of mind knowing, cool, when she comes online this morning, she She's going to see that Loom video. She's going to know exactly what I need from her. And I haven't had to try and call Chris during the day when I've got my two little ones running around and talk to her when I'm not even at my computer and there's kids in the background. And I think that comes back to efficiency as well. Something my business buddies, my friends, mm. a lot of people around me, they often say, I just don't know how you get so much done. And a lot of it is efficiency. Like I think my team and I, we don't have to talk like nobody interrupts each other we've got systems and processes for streamlined communication that means there is no back and forth there we do no internal emailing all internal comms is in chat google chat so email yes. is exclusively yep, for external so we're just so efficient in that way and look i know we could kind of talk about this stuff forever i might pivot to just quickly asking you to share your journey from joining the program on pricing because you talked about that before we pressed record. Yeah, just like the pricing sort of module mindset sort of thing. So for me, yeah. um, like and the pricing is our other module that I've done. It was just a huge mindset shift for me because like sometimes you just need somebody else to say, yes, it's okay to do it this way and other people are doing it and it will work. And that was really what I needed for the mindset shift between hourly rate to fixed. And it was a really hard shift for me. Like I felt times where mm. I shifted and I was committed and I was like, yep, next one, I'm going to offer fixed price. And then I had times where I doubted myself and I would, you know, have one and I go, oh, you know, we'll, we'll do this one at hourly rate. And it was a journey between an ultimate like, no, this is what we do going forward or it's not a right fit sort of mindset. It was a big journey and it really has been nearly the whole eight months of just going, okay, yeah, this is new to me. I'm going to try it out. Got the tools with Ignition to have that, you know, productized services there. And it's been the biggest journey is the mindset shift. One of the biggest value items from the program is like knowing it's there, knowing other people do it and just being told how to do it. And yeah, I don't think I would have done it if I didn't have that module. 
because I might have heard other bookkeepers doing it, but whether I would have had the confidence to switch, maybe not. Mm, okay, I love hearing that because your pricing strategy, productized services, it's one of the top three pillars to finding that success in your practice because we don't want to be a busy bookkeeper. We want to be a thriving bookkeeper. And Bruna implemented the other day, Wednesday, and Jo said, she said to one of the bookkeepers, we're doing a pricing hot seat. And this bookkeeper said, oh, all my friends are charging $85 an hour and I'm charging more. And Joe kind of stopped me and she said to this beautiful bookkeeper, do you know what is happening under the hood? What is happening behind the scenes is often what you don't know. Like you'll hear someone mm. charging an hourly rate or whatever and you make an assumption because they're busy, they're successful. And that is not true, right? I, I get mm. bookkeepers regularly. I had one recently telling me how busy she was. And I thought, I'm hearing busy, I'm hearing revenue. Talk to me about profit and time well. You know what I mean? Talk to me about scalability. Getting that productized services, the pricing strategy right so that you can just begin the mindset shift. I mean, I'm asking my beautiful bookkeepers who are exceeding all my expectations to join me in selling intellectual property, which they're just foaming for. I thought they wouldn't even be ready. Deb messaged me yesterday like, you know, I want it, I want it, I want it. So you know, that first step from hourly to fixed, but then from fixed to outcome is the beginning of the shift that goes to a place of, you know, I never thought this was possible. So it's so, so important, but definitely one of the top three pillars. So you focus mainly on the pricing and the standard operating procedures. Are you bundling in the strategic bookkeeping type advisory services as well now? Yeah, I am. So I've always sort of done it from the start. So that was one of the things where I did the program. I went, oh, cool. Other people are doing it because I have always done it, but I was charging an hourly rate for that. Whereas when I look at that work now, I factor in my head, that's higher value. So when I factor that offering that into the price, it bumps it up more so than just factoring in an hour of bank recs. So yeah, that that's one of our options. I usually... Um, include as an offering of like a quarterly performance review and a quarterly cash flow forecast update. I would say nearly half of our clients are on that package. And I I know you say give them what they want first, not what they need. And that's hard for me to do because I know that that's what sets <laughs> us apart. But yeah, that's been something that I've tried to tried to hold true to. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say half of our clients do. And they're all the ones that I know are the happiest because I know that's the reason that they will stay longer than someone else mm -hmm. who's just doing bookkeeping. Yeah, there's but the basic That's what they're waiting it. for, they look out for. Yeah, it's a cost, it's a grudge purchase that nobody wants to incur, but the strategic bookkeeping they can't do without. And it's an investment and they make more than they spend on that. So the same with us. The clients who pay me the most money are the ones that are the happiest. Okay, and you're seeing these results in the profitability and the revenue yet? Yeah, I definitely am. So like when I started out, we were in growth phase. So I knew that, you know, performance was going to uplift because we just kept taking on more and more clients. Um, and, you know, I was going from the start where I was, I don't think I paid myself anything for the first six months. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, I was paying myself a small wage. And I, you know, marked these milestones for myself where I have now replaced what I was earning in a part-time job working three days a week. That was my first milestone was like, okay, if I was in a part-time job before and I was working three days, that's my first milestone. If I can't make what I was making as an employee, it's not worth all of the extra stress because you work so much longer than you would just being an employee getting paid for every hour that you work. Yes. So, yeah, it's been really good. I've had steady growth and I've just managed that and I closed the books when I saw that XPM was needed and that we were at capacity. So we've leveled off a bit. But yeah, happy to say that I've essentially replaced um, what I was earning part time. But now we're at the stage where we can continue to scale up so that profitability can keep going, hopefully. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think your favorite three parts of the program are so far? Pricing. Mm. The, the standard <laughs> operating procedures and I would say like just access to be able to ask you questions when we might be like I don't know just a bit not sure whether it's like Facebook or it's very specific to us 
that's probably been the third most valuable thing is that if I feel like I've had a specific question, I have been able to ask you and you've been kind enough to get back to me because there were points, I think, last year where I was like, oh, I can see that, you know, you're not doing this task and you've got your team doing it. Like, how did you do that? Here's my specific problem. What did you do? I wouldn't have found that necessarily specifically in the program because it was like a very Mm. specific thing to my workflow in my practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That is awesome. And I love hearing that because my role in the strategic bookkeeper is obviously multifaceted, but when I show up with the team and I've already built out the academy, so that's all there, my role is that of the coach, you know? And Mm. so it's having that veteran bookkeeping coach and that's why I don't always show up softly softly (laughs) you know sometimes I have to show up as tough coach Jeannie but always with open hearts and open mind and in a safe space so that's really cool for me to hear as well I'm so glad that you said pricing because it's just such a massive part all right awesome I think What I wanted to do today was really be able to give bookkeepers everywhere your story in order to help them to hear how you're dealing with challenges in what you have done. And I think we've done that today. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's lovely to talk to you. Okay, my friend, now it is time to take action. So what are you going to do with what you learned today? The way I see it, you've got two options. You can go it alone to try and save some money, or you can back yourself and go for it and join my tribe. And let me tell you, we are knocking it out of the ballpark. That's not a sales pitch. That is me serving you, dare I say, courageously. To find success, I 100% know you need the mechanics, which is like the keys to the kingdom, but you also need to get your mindset right and be super productive. And these are all things I help you with inside the program. I could go on about this forever because I really want this for you. Have a prosperous week and I'll see you in the next episode.